All right, now we are looking at the front side of our E82 motor. We're gonna dig into the timing belts, and we are going to change out the front seal, the crank seals, and remove the timing belt covers. The benefits of leaving the timing covers off of the engine is it takes your timing, timing belt job down from two hours to 20 minutes. It also allows you to access the oil pump and the water pump without removing the crank pulley and without removing the AC and alternator assembly there. These are all 10 millimeter bolts all the way around. And this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt that's supposed to be there have a nut on the back side. Other than that, a quarter inch drive, 10 millimeter is all it takes to get that apart. Now we're gonna to wanna to take the crank pulley off and remove the dipstick to get these parts off. Um, impact works good to remove this. And a lot of times, sometimes you'll have Subarus that have issues with the crank pulleys working loose if you can't get them torqued enough. And it's easiest to torque this thing up with an impact tool with the motor out of the car because otherwise you're going to be, you know, trying to put it in gear and find some way to chalk the whole thing up to get enough torque on there and hope it stays. And I've seen these things back out from not having enough torque on them. But you also don't want to put too much torque on there. You run the risk of stretching the threads or uh, stretching the bolt to where it won't hold torque. Are exposed belts. Now you might say this is exposed belts, but what I'm talking about running without the covers is removing the inner side also. And um, the piece I'll leave on, I'll leave this piece here because this part of the belt is the only part that will be exposed from the back side. Other than that, you know, we need to take the pulleys off anyway to get to the cam seals. So while you're at it, remove the inner covers as well if you're going to go truly open belt because otherwise with this outer edge of the plastic that's going to be in your way trying to slip the belts off and on like over the side of the road it gives you a lot more clearance to work with and this car has 105,000 miles it looks like the timing belts had probably been done before the tensioners look really good but as we can see here we have a little bit of slack in the top half of this belt um, which usually after running new belts they can stretch a little bit or if they're not installed properly, you're going to have that problem. There's supposed to be about 17 foot-pounds of torque against this cam pulley, so if you are doing this by hand, you're going to take this cam and rotate it to take the slack out of the top side of the belt, and then you're going to let the, this, this thing spring up to take the slack from there. There is a little bit of slack there. If you have that slack, you're going to have backlash on it every time the cam rotates around which can mildly offset your timing or excessively wear on parts because they're backlashing around. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the uh, cam pulleys. I find it easiest to do those with the belt still on because it holds the whole rig still. Otherwise, if you have trouble with that, you can take the valve covers off and there's a flat spot on the cam you can grab onto with the 7 8 wrench to turn the cams manually. All right, now we're looking at the uh, back side of the cams, cam pulleys. Here we see we do have our cam seal here, cam seal here. Looks like there's a little bit of leakage on that one. It also looks like this one's been replaced with somebody smeared blue silicone on there too, which I've never seen that. I wouldn't consider that a normal procedure. So we're going to change those out anyway since we have the parts. Uh, this cam retainer comes out. You can change the seal with it on the cam, but I find it easier to take the cam retainer off, pop out the old seal, pop in the new one, and then slide the whole thing back on once it's said and done. Here's our crank. These pulleys should slide off. Sometimes they're kind of stuck. Somebody, some people are going to tell you to get a gear puller, but they're supposed to slide off like that. If you feel like it, you can put a little bit of anti-seize or some motor oil on there when you go back together so it comes apart again. There is a keyway on the back of that crank. Make sure you don't lose that or gouge it up. And if I remember right, that should be pointing down when the uh, flywheel is centered for the timing belt alignment. Here I do see a little bit of evidence of leaking on this crank seal. Seeing that the cam seals have been done, I, I'm assuming this could be the original front main seal. As far as the mechanic who did this car didn't get that far into it. Maybe he couldn't get those uh, pulleys off of there. And if you can see here, there is a little bit of leakage there, which um, I guess it's just leaking. It looks like that seal's been pressed in a little farther than it's supposed to be. 
and the lip is worn out because of that. All right, here's our uh, timing belt pulleys, tensioner pulleys. This is the new one, this is the old one. These older ones have been replaced. These are newer than OEM. But if you notice, the newer ones have a little bit more rolling resistance, a little bit tighter. That's how you tell the bearing's good. These spin a little more freely because they're more broke in. If you had a really bad one, it would spin too easily and it would make a bunch of noise like a skateboard wheel. So something that's nice and tight that you're really not hearing any noise is what you want to uh, gauge the use of your uh, how good your pulleys are. Now these ones are still good. Like I was saying, this has been serviced to where these pulleys would still last quite a bit. I'm going to keep them around as spares just to throw on cars that have absolutely just junked out pulleys. And if you notice the shape of them, there's a left and a right. One side's more angled than the other. If you try to put one on the wrong side, you'll see that it's upside down and the holes won't line up. So once you try to match them to the motor, you can't get the two confused. This our engine with the uh, inner timing belt covers removed. And you're looking right at your uh, cam retainers. We have one here and we have one here. And it looks like whoever worked on this really beat the crap out of it. And no wonder it's leaking. So for the fact that we have, you know, this shit just laying around and falling out of our asses, we can steal one off this other engine I got and replace this one with it.